Shut up and sit down. What's going on everybody? This is Jake here with Beyond the Berm. Welcome to another tabletop review. Today we're going to be going over the Sig Sauer Romeo 7 Red Dot Sight. I've owned this sight for about six months now and I feel confident that I can actually give a detailed overview on how I feel about the sight. First off, the sight came in a nice package. Um, presentation is always part of the ball game if it comes in this junky package you know you might think it's a piece of crap but SIG did a really good job with this comes with a nice sturdy box nice foam inserts it came with a cloth for cleaning uh, some extra screws and an allen key um, it also came with two mounts which I'll get into in a minute uh, some other items that came in the box were the flip caps for the, the optic itself and a kill flash that threads onto the front of the optic. Now onto the mounts. The one that I don't have installed is this low mount that um, allows an absolute co-witness or um, a mount for like a shotgun or something along those lines. Um, this one uses just a typical um, some kind of hex head or you can stick the allen through it and it will tighten right down for you. Um, and the other mount, which is on the rifle, is a QD lever throw mount. Um, I have checked the rifle. The rifle's clear. But that mount, as you can see, it raises it up for really good lower one-third co-witness. See, there is the little throw lever. Now, that lever is actually locked in place by this little tab here so if you pull that tab back you'll be able to just throw it and the optic will come right off but right now that's locked in place so it's not going anywhere so even if it did get snagged the optics not going to come off and I say the, I bring up the snagging because as you can see it is kind of off the side of the rifle a little bit it's a little obtrusive I personally haven't had it snag on anything so I'm not that worried about it but it is something to consider if you do buy the rifle and you want a nice smooth slim line like some other mounts that sit flush with the side of the, the rifle. Some other features are a 2 MOA dot um, which is perfectly crisp not for my eyes unfortunately I have an astigmatism so most red dots are a little blown out they kinda have like a little sunburst to them. That's kind of unfortunate for me but they still do what they, I need them to do. Uh, everybody else that has used the optic has said that it's a perfectly crisp nice clear dot and I honestly have to trust them with that. Other than that it uses a AA battery um, which is installed on the right hand side of the optic as you can see here you'll unscrew the cap on the front and the battery will you know just drop right out that's kind of a nice feature because you don't have to remove the optic from the rifle to replace the battery. Um, I have not checked if it retains zero when you change the battery because I haven't had to. Um, I've left it on for the past six months and I'm having no battery issues so far. Um, speaking of battery, SIG claims that it lasts 62,500 hours. That's a really long time. Um, I'm going to test it. I'm going to see how long it actually lasts. So I'm at the six month mark uh, about a month ago. So when it dies, I'll let you guys know. I'm really curious to see how long it's actually going to last. Um, it is nice that it uses a double A. I got a second double A sitting inside the grip just in case. You never know. Um, came with these standard flip caps. Nothing, nothing special. And it came with the kill flash, which is installed. As you can see, that little honeycomb inside of there. Give you a little shot of the dot. As you can see, pretty crisp. Nice to see right through. Now the kill flash does not impede my, my viewing. You don't even notice it when you're shooting. So I leave it on there. 
it kind of looks cool so you know why not some other things are the rifle um, I've never had any issues with it unzeroing. Um, I have the dot zeroed to my irons at a 50 uh, slash 200 yard zero. So say I ever did have to remove the optic or I did have to replace the battery and it did become unzeroed, I can just re-zero straight to my irons and I'm good to go. Back to that 5200. I personally use the 5200 because my local range is a 200 yard range and being in the environment that I'm in, I am more likely to use this rifle for engagements around under 200 yards. So it makes sense for me to have that uh, zero. Some other things, the, the optic is IPX8 waterproof. It can be submerged up to 10 meters. Um, I don't know the time, but I don't plan on letting this rifle go 10 meters underwater anytime soon. But it's nice to know that it can. Um, I have to say, SIG's done a pretty good job with this. Um, I have heard rumors that SIG outsourced the production of this optic to Holosun, which I can't really confirm or deny, but it kind of makes sense as Holosun's optics have been pretty, pretty solid uh, recently. I've, I've experienced with another similar optic to this from Holosun, which is also a 30 millimeter full size uh, patrol style optic, and it's been very nice. That one has the, the solar panel and the, the ability to switch back and forth between the 65 MOA ring and just I believe it's a 3 MOA dot on that one, that particular model. I'm uncertain about that though. It's not mine so I don't really pay attention to it. So far it's been plenty reliable. Like I've said it hasn't lost zero or anything like that. Um, I do like the fact that it uses SIG's MOTAC feature which after 120 seconds of staying still the optic will power down and be ready and on alert for any movement. Um, that, I'm pretty certain that's how they get that extreme battery life but not entirely sure. They do say that it's 62,500 hours of continuous runtime on medium which Medium is probably, I would assume, right around um, right around 5, the 5th click. There are 11 power settings, 2 which are night vision, the first 2, and then you have 9 daytime settings. Um, the mount, this mount, the lower one third mount, sits at 1.535 inches, which is just about perfect for any night vision or any uh, magnifiers or anything you might want to add onto it. I don't have the ability for night vision. Um, I don't necessarily want to add any magnifiers to this because it's already quite bulky. Uh, the optic is definitely a heavy one. It's not, it's not light, but I personally wanted a full size rugged um, 30 millimeter optic. Uh, I guess you can compare it to the Aimpoint Patrol in that aspect in size. Uh, the Patrol is still a little bit lighter I believe, but I wanted that full field of view with the 30 millimeter optic. Uh, so far, it's been really good to me. I, I do plan on giving any updates if I have any issues with it, but for right around $300, I really don't think you can go wrong. I believe on Optics Planet, you'll find these for right around 300 bucks, which is one hell of a deal, to be honest. Um, for something that has this quality to it, this feel, um, really can't beat it. Uh, you're going to be spending a couple hundred extra dollars to find anything that's comparable, to be honest with you, unless you're going with Holosun, which yet again makes sense, as I believe they do have a partnership. Uh, you look at SIG's Romeo 4 and Romeo 5 20 millimeter optics, and they're remarkably similar to Holosun's um, optics that are also in the same category. That's about it for today, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, drop a comment, like, share, subscribe. I appreciate it, guys.